there, it's Tanya Gabrielle, Wealth Astrologist. Welcome to Star Codes. This is the podcast where we look at an upcoming event in the celestial realms, the astrology and numerology code for the event in order to navigate it for our highest good. And today we're going to look at a very big event, really the first momentous change in 2024. And that is Pluto re-entering Aquarius, and this time for most of the year. Now, a few things to just remind you of. Pluto is the slowest moving planet because it's the furthest from the sun. It has an elliptical orbit, and it takes about 248 years to move around the zodiac. So when it changes signs, it's a big deal because it stays in every sign for a long time. So in November of this year, November 19th to be precise, Pluto will be moving out of Capricorn and into Aquarius for 20 years without dipping back in due to the retrogrades. And this will be the final time that Pluto enters Aquarius before dipping back in on September 1st for two and a half months. So it is a really big deal because most of the year it will be in the sign that governs our new age, Aquarius. So it's, again, made even more important. Now I want you to circle back to right at the start of 2020 when we had that big stellium in Capricorn, which is where Pluto is right now, and that stellium was a 500 year event, if you remember, on January 12th, 2020. And it basically involved Pluto and Saturn in Capricorn. Saturn rules Capricorn. And they were joined by the Sun and Mercury, which made it a stellium. A stellium is when three or more light bodies or planets come together. The Sun is a star, so I call it a light body. So. The Sun, Mercury, Pluto, and Saturn were in Saturn's sign of Capricorn, and that hadn't happened in 500 years. And the last time it happened was 500 years prior when Martin Luther broke away from the Catholic Church and started Protestantism in, I think that's the right word, but it, it obviously was a movement away from what was felt as tyranny at the time. So this is an important moment because we started that at the beginning of the decade, that same kind of theme of breaking away. And now that slowest planet, Pluto, the planet of power and transformation, is now leaving that sign of Capricorn. So we'll really be feeling it this year. This is a big deal because Pluto represents the purging of the old and Capricorn is the sign that governs long-standing traditions and structures like corporations and ways of doing things culturally, historically. These structures are being dismantled and Pluto is playing a huge role in doing so. And that process really was kicked into gear in a, on a higher level at the beginning of 2020. And we all know what happened at that point. You know, life changed in a dramatic way. So now we're moving Pluto into Aquarius and each time that Pluto circles around after 248 years and moves into this zodiac sign of Aquarius, the status quo and what is considered both real and established, which is Capricorn, the sign Pluto's leaving, are radically shifted. And the last time Pluto actually changed signs and moved into Aquarius from Capricorn was at the end of the 18th century. So 1778 to 1798, around that time. It takes Pluto some time because of the retrogrades. And that was a time in history when countries around the world were rising up and challenging the ruling authority. So a very similar theme to the Martin Luther event that I described with the stellium. That, that was not a changing of the signs, but that was also involving Pluto in Capricorn with Saturn, Sun, and Mercury. Now these rising up and challenging the ruling authority themes 
involved major political situations and social revolutions and Aquarius rules revolutions. Aquarius is about moving into a new paradigm, the future. It actually governs the future. It governs innovation and breaking through into new inventions. And it also governs technology and the ability to use your intelligence to understand at a higher level what it is you need to know in order to move in a very inspired way into the future. So not to be stuck in past ways, but in new ways that you receive through inspiration. So when we look at the moment right now, let's set the stage. On January 11th, we had the Capricorn new moon. This is the sign Pluto is currently in, about to leave. That new moon happened at 20 degrees. Sun and moon next to each other at 20 degrees in Capricorn. Sun and moon, the light bodies, the luminaries, 2020 vision, lighting up what we're seeing, making it clear. We are curious now, we want to know more. We are being set free from not knowing certain things about our history, about how things actually happened or about our personal lives or about our past lives, whatever our, our beliefs, whatever we carry with us that was unconscious is being made clear. It's a really big theme and you can look at it in many different levels and understand the importance of it, especially since we have five consecutive new moons at 20 degrees from November to December to January, the Capricorn new moon right in the middle, and then two more in February and March. So it's like a big wake up call with 2020 vision, seeing lighting the sun and moon, the luminaries onto what's right in front of us. Now, January 11th was a big day for this Capricorn new moon because 11 is double new beginnings. And that date in 2024 adds up to another 11, 11 universal dates. So we have the day, the 11th, and then an 11 universal date. That's the 1111 portal, which is all about being so divinely present in the here and now that you have no sense at all about worrying about the future or feeling somehow down or, or reminiscent or attached to the past, right? So that's really important because it does show a birth in a big way. And remember that Pluto is changing signs into the very zodiac sign that is now starting a brand new 2000 year age, Aquarius. So it will take longer because it encompasses also a new age. When we look at when the last time was Pluto entered Aquarius, it was in 1778. And so Pluto was at the end of Capricorn in 1776 when the U.S. was created. The U.S. birthday is July 4th, 1776. Pluto was at 27 degrees Capricorn at the very end of Capricorn. And again, now same thing, very end of Capricorn for the first time since 1778. Eight. Now it's moving into Aquarius, right? 1778 is when it moved into from Capricorn into Aquarius. So this is the first U.S. Pluto return, and that happened last year, 2023. And I'm just going to throw one other return in because this time is so big. The U.S. has another major return by Uranus in 2025, and it'll be the fourth return. And we're going to go into that at another time because the other three are hugely important what happened in history at that time. So these returns of these slow moving planets happening at the same time will always impact us. And in fact, for the whole world in 2025, we are going to experience all slow moving planets, all six at zero degrees at a sign. They're all changing signs at the same time. Really incredible, huge change and shift. And so 2024, as I keep saying, is a major turning point year. It's really dynamic. So we have the 1111 Capricorn New Moon. That was the first lunation of 2024. 
So now we have Pluto moving into Aquarius and will be most of the year in that sign and that'll be January 20th in the Americas, January 21st, the rest of the world. And the good news is next year, 2025, Pluto and Uranus will be in an absolutely gorgeous trine, which is the most harmonious connection in astrology. It's 120 degrees. They will both be in air signs, Aquarius for Pluto, of course, Uranus will be in Gemini. That will really facilitate the shifts that I was mentioning earlier. So we are now in the final push. We are now in 2024 and Pluto's shift is really signifying the end of a huge, long, epic segment of human history. We're in the Piscean Age, moving into the Aquarian Age at this time. We've been ruled by Neptune, which causes a lot of spiritual awakening, creativity, arts, all of that, but also a lot of illusion and delusion at the same time, and also victimization, which are the shadow side of, of Pisces. Now we're moving into that Aquarian age, and Pluto, the, the, the furthest out planet, right? The planet that takes the longest to go around the zodiac is saying, hi, Aquarius, I'm moving in just as you're changing, and I want to make sure that we're dismantling the old paradigms, beliefs, everything you know, the, the hardest stuff to dismantle really is what, what you believe. And so Pluto is absolutely accomplishing that right now. Uh, it is a big deal. This is why with previous Plutos entering into Aquarius, belief systems were shifted. Like the breakaway from the Catholic Church, that is a belief system that was radically shifted at that time. You can imagine there was no internet, there barely were even books that people read. It literally was a spiritual, deep, movement that happened back then. So Pluto represents power, but the highest power is directly aligned with love. The inner empowerment that you feel from within is directly correlated to the compassion that you have for others. God is love, and the more compassion you have, the greater you feel in terms of your inner empowerment, your inner confidence, your ability to lead from the heart. And this is the shift that's happening now. The Piscean age is about unconditional love and we're coming to the end of it. And next year, Neptune actually leaves its own sign of Pisces. Neptune happens to be in Pisces right now as well, which is incredible. As Pluto enters Aquarius, the next age, Neptune is in Pisces, the age we're leaving. Neptune rules Pisces. This is huge stuff. It's like epic astrology here. So the highest expression of Pisces is unconditional love and compassion for others. And so again, you feel empowered through compassion and that is needed because we are in a battle now between the old and the new. I'm sure you feel it. It's like a frequency battle. So we want to step up and the way we step up is through compassion and action. We're in an eight universal year in 2024. That does require action. Eight is the infinity number. It reminds you, you have infinite resources at your disposal. You're waking up to that and stepping up to do things brings change. And with compassion, that is accomplished in the most beautiful way. With aggression, it is incredibly difficult to move through the change. And so here is the biggest takeaway really in terms of how important this moment is with Pluto moving into Aquarius. Well, the sun, bringer of light, bringer of life, moves into Aquarius at the exact time that Pluto moves into Aquarius. The sun enters on January 20th, Aquarius at zero degrees. Pluto enters Aquarius at zero degrees at that same moment. No matter where you live on earth, this is happening the same time. This is huge. This is a zero point moment. This is about life and action. The sun is action. Being filled with strength, being filled with confidence, knowing that it's a time that's been destined, right? How, how else can you plan this? This is divinely planned for the sun and Pluto to be married to each other and join and move through into the Aquarian age, into Aquarius. So, your greatest power 
or you could call it a superpower, is to acknowledge what is going on in front of you without joining it. Being able to feel peace and to be able to transcend conflict by harmonizing it in yourself and others, this is how you free up energy to feel love, to feel oneness. So you are able to transcend fear, to transcend conflict, to transcend guilt by seeing it for what it is and remembering that you're far more than those lower vibrations. They create a sense of lack in you. They make you feel like you have limited resources. They make you feel separate. And so this is disempowerment, right? You don't want to feel that. So as the fear-based programming loses its impact on us, you will be able to compensate more than ever. And by doing that, by seeing it, you will alchemize it. You will alchemize it with joy and alchemize it with love. So elevate your thoughts by being and doing what is good, what is right, and be who you want to see in the world. Be neutral. Stay balanced in the midst of any polarization. And that is being true love. That is being true life, right? The sun rises and it sets no matter what. It You can count on the sun to bring light, to bring life. And for us, it's the same. No matter what is going on, we rise, we shine, and then we rest. And we do the same every day. We don't dim our light to match a lower frequency. We resonate with our heart no matter what frequency shows up. Never dim, never lower your frequency in order to fit in or fulfill someone else's expectations, right? That is being separate from your heart. That is truly what the separation means. That means also you feel a sense of lack, like you should be somehow accepted on a lower level when it truly is not what the situation needs. The situation always requires and needs you at your highest vibrational level. And that can mean keeping silent. That can mean not speaking. That can mean a very important spiritual practice, which is to keep quiet. Keeping silence, even if it's just for a few seconds or a few minutes, is a really time-honored practice in many spiritual realms. That's because when you use your voice to say anything, it actually reinforces what you're thinking about. So vocalizing your thoughts internalizes and assimilates them. And whenever you stop yourself from saying something, you, and these are things you would ordinarily respond with. So you don't actually do the ordinary, this is how I usually respond, but you actually are silent. You're literally making a choice consciously to extinguish a thought before you speak it. And over time, you're going to weaken that incessant thought stream and minimize its potency on you because you are keeping silent for a few seconds and then deciding, do I actually need to speak these words? In fact, keeping silence for a few seconds before you speak at all is usually recommended because it will allow you to make your interactions go even deeper. They are more meaningful when they are preceded by silence. If you listen to beautiful music, there are rests in that music. And those rests are just as meaningful, just as powerful, even more so, because they actually lay the foundation for what's to come. It's like when you hear noise or sound all the time, it's very hard to go within. You can't hear your inner voice due to the other interference. So sound is very powerful. And this year, you will find it to be even more important 
during this eight universal year and remember the 1111 first lunation in Capricorn, the new moon. 1111 is double new beginnings doubled up. New moon is also new beginnings. 11 is also about intuition, silence, psychic awareness, which requires you to not speak, to listen. So listening is a big theme as well. There's a lot that is happening, as you can see, and we are all equipped to move through this energy in a beautiful way. In fact, the opportunities are greater than ever when you stay true to your heart and listen and not interfere or lower your energy in order to fit in, right? When you know something doesn't feel right, it's very important to listen now and then to investigate if need be, to understand why you might be feeling something but don't have the context. So to support this awakening, which is ongoing and intensifying, I do have a free masterclass. And it's something that I really feel will help you because it is there to help you take your power back. And you can watch it at spiritualmasteryclass.com. Again, it's free and it covers the secret to spiritual mastery. So important right now. We go into the secrets of your rising sign and the difference between individuality and uniqueness, which is a huge theme for Aquarius, major theme, especially with Pluto moving in now. We look at your natal sun and natal moon's profound impact on living in a, a life of abundance a life of leadership, a life of joy, of peace, big themes for 2024. And you will also discover how to instantly connect with source, with spirit, and a lot more secret tools. So enjoy that free masterclass at spiritualmasteryclass.com. Have a beautiful Pluto in Aquarius day. Know that All is well, all is good, goodness always shall prevail, and you are truly remarkable. I wish you all the best, and I'll see you in next week's Star Codes podcast. Lots of love.